Hi everyone hey and welcome. Today is Friday and it is Book Friday. Uh, this is Jay, I'm Krista, and this is Say I Do Forever. And we're here talking about the differences between men and women. There are so many differences between men and women. And the list goes on. <laughs> and the list goes on. So today we're talking about chapter six, about conflict. We know that well. We do conflict. Not well, but we do it a we, lot. We know it well. <laughs> We're pretty passionate uh, people. So we are in the book, Men Are Like Waffles, Women Are Like Spaghetti. And we are on chapter six. And Jay thought we should start with what he thinks is truth. We're going to see if it's truth. But Bill, the writer, wrote I this. Thought, I thought it was brilliant. I don't think his wife wrote it. <laughs> Okay. You the, tell us if it's true in the comments. Ready? Yeah. The words we the words we share really matter, but we can keep a sense of humor also. Here are some of the words women use in an interesting way. Fine. This is the word women use to end an argument when they feel they are right and you need to back off. Never use fine to describe how a woman looks. This oh, will, there's multiple levels to this word fine. Yeah. This will cause you to have one of those arguments. So let's talk about that. So it's fine. Fine. Or you look fine. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been with Krista for 35 years and I've always known that you just don't say when she says, well, how do I look? Yeah, I look fine. No, no, because if you're going somewhere, that's going to cause another hour or two hours of, of primping and getting ready Especially time. Especially don't do it like oh, this. I... You look fine. <laughs> Did you even see what color am I wearing? <laughs> oh, boy. But what happens when I say, okay, fine, or fine? That's not a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Not for husbands, anyway. Okay, so maybe he's tr he's right on, on number one. Okay, next one is five minutes. <laughs> this is a half an hour. It's equivalent to the five minutes your football game is going to last before you take out the trash. <laughs> you know, when you're watching football... I'll do football, it in five minutes. But when you're watching football, there's not much you can do about five minutes of time ending up being 30 minutes because if they go out of bounds or if they have a timeout or if anything else happens, mm -hmm. it stretches the five minutes out. So it can't really yeah. use five minutes for a football game. It doesn't work that way. Mm. But also, it's the equivalent of how long till a woman's going to be ready. Yeah, I'll I'm, not, ready buying, in five I'm minutes. not buying five minutes either because <laughs> when you say five minutes, it's usually a half hour. So, So yeah, five minutes really is about a half hour. In marriage it is. <laughs> okay, okay, he's right on number two. All right, here's number three. Nothing. This means something, and you should be on your toes. Uh -uh. Nothing is usually used to describe the a feeling a woman has of wanting to turn you inside out, upside down, and backwards. <laughs> it usually signifies an argument that will last five minutes and ending up with... Fine. Fine. <laughs> have those have those arguments and discussions. Um, it, what's wrong, honey? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, a one a one response with nothing is definitely an issue. Oh. There definitely needs to be. <coughs> excuse me. There definitely needs to be a open communication on why the spouse is saying nothing. That's a close-ended answer yeah, and response. And then, yeah, this book in another chapter says that men do have a nothing box. So if you're asking them, what are you thinking about? And they say nothing. We're supposed to believe you guys that yeah, you're thinking of nothing. But then if we, so if we say nothing, mm -mm. it's not nothing. Mm -mm. If you say nothing, it's nothing. Mm -mm. No. No. <laughs> if you ask me, what are you thinking about? If I say nothing, then I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just like chilling out. If mm -hmm. I if if we're in an argument or a heated discussion and you say 
what do you think? And I say, nothing. Then, then that is me not wanting to continue the conversation because it's not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> so the next one is, go ahead, spoken with raised eyebrows. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's a dangerous place to be when your wife's eyebrows are raised and she says, go ahead. That is a huge stop sign. That is not go ahead. Would that go with whatever you want? Yeah. <laughs> And that, that's, yeah, that's a dangerous area, Whatever too. Whatever you want to do. Well, she says, uh, or he says, Bill says, this is a dare, one that will result in a woman getting upset over nothing. Nothing. And will end with fine. Fine. <laughs> Moving to he the He might next. be on to something. I think he's got some I, truth here. <laughs> I think these are all personal experiences that he's had. With his, his wife and his marriage, with their relationship. So you're not alone if you're feeling that, guys. <laughs> yeah, you guys have got to be on board on this one. So the next one is, go ahead. Spoken go ahead. with normal eyebrows. Oh, normal eyebrows. This means I give up or do you want, or do what you want because I don't care. You will get a raised eyebrow, go ahead. In just a few minutes, followed up by nothing and fine, she will talk to you in about five minutes when she cools off. <laughs> that was good. Next one is loud sigh. <sighs> I never do that. Whatever. <laughs> yes, you do. This isn't actually a word, but it is a nonverbal statement often misunderstood by men. A loud sigh means she thinks mm -hmm. you're an idiot and <laughs> wonders why she's wasting her time arguing with you over nothing. Nothing. Soft sigh. This also isn't a word but a nonverbal statement. Soft sigh means she's content. Oh. Your best bet is to not move or breathe and she will stay content. <laughs> I've experienced that firsthand. Just saying. Just saying. First hand. Come out of the bedroom, look around. Yep. That was a soft sigh. Everything's good in her world. Don't say anything. Don't, Don't do move. anything. Don't move. Don't breathe. It's not that bad. Is it? Oh my God. Depends on the day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. So far, he's been right on, though. Then the next one is, that's okay. This is one of the most dangerous statements a woman makes to a man. That's okay. Means she wants to think long and hard and before paying you back for whatever it is you've done. That's okay. Is often a, used, a term used with a raised eyebrow. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> next Next one is, please do. Mm -hmm. This is not a statement. It is an offer. A woman is giving you the chance to come up with some excuse for doing whatever it is you've done. You have a fair chance with the truth, so be careful. And you shouldn't get a, that's okay. <laughs> Thanks. You don't do it with the same flair as a woman, though. That's because I'm not a woman. <laughs> the next one is thanks. Oh my God. A woman is thanking you. Don't faint. Just say you're welcome. <laughs> Keep walk it simple. Away. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. Right? Oh. Okay. Thanks a lot. This is much different from oh, thanks. Oh, that's way different than thanks. A woman will say thanks a lot when she is really ticked off at you. Yes, she does. Yes, she. And that is the <laughs> statement. It signifies that you have offended her in some callous way, and it will be followed up by the loud <sighs> sigh. Be careful not to ask what is wrong. After is the your... loud sigh, she will only tell you nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what is wrong? Now? And that's. And it don't for say it with that. the word now at the end. What yeah. is word? What is wrong now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't. Don't over exaggerate the word now because <laughs> then you're going to get the raised eyebrow you might and some other comments you don't want to hear. 
What's wrong, sweetie? How can I be as of be of assistance to you? <laughs> what can I do to make you happy? <laughs> what can I change of me to make you feel better? <laughs> Oh, guys, we're speaking from personal experience. Yes, we are. This week, people. Yes, we are. It's been a rough week. <laughs> Should we go over the ATM, or did you want to touch? Some we'll more do that on at this? the end. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but let me um, find some where, of the other ones. Yeah. Let me find. Reroute the current. Is that what you want? Well. Or is that what so you're looking for? So let's let's just talk about um, discuss those things and our week and how we do with conflict. So let me just say this, that um, it's a good thing and a bad thing, but Jay and I are very comfortable with each other. And he's the first man, first person I've ever felt comfortable enough to say what I really feel. Call me, call me out on stuff is what she does. <laughs> I'm good for you. Yes, you are. <laughs> Yes. So yes, it is are. made for a very, I think um, even when we were dating in high school, people used to be like, you guys, quit arguing. I think we mm. did a lot. Mm. We're passionate, right? You're talking in school? In high school, in we high even school? argued. In well, and then even our kids, our kids, our daughter, Cynthia, she would always say, ah, why are you guys ar always arguing? I always looked at her and say, we're not arguing, we're discussing. We're discussing we just passionately. Di we discuss passionately, absolutely. We're passionate people. And I think over the years, <laughs> our daughter has realized that. And now yeah. she just is like, ah, whatever. This but we've family. had to learn some skills through right. the years um, right. to not be destructive. I think that there's a difference when you have oh, yeah. conflict of how you can actually tear your spouse down and how you can destroy the marriage, or you can actually take conflict because you can be married a long time mm -hmm. and have had conflict. Um, if you're one of those couples that has never fought, maybe you never talked about anything deep. Yeah, yeah, bring up, mm -hmm. bring up uh, some pressure cooker questions <laughs> and discuss those. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, things that are important to you mm -hmm. that you don't, aren't sure that it is important to your spouse or vice versa, oh yeah, mm -hmm. that'll get some conflict going. Yeah, and so- Or discussion. You know, if you guys read this chapter, he does have a lot of really good tips. He has some passwords you can use to diffuse things. He talks about, you know, um, sound sound the alert, which is um, when you start first start becoming agitated, don't let it fester. You wanna um, kind of say things like, if um, I'm getting my feelings hurt here, we need to stop or we need to be more careful or there's things another, like that. There's another thing too is you guys need to realize, especially young marrieds, newly marrieds, <clears throat> there's a way to argue and you belittle your spouse. And then there's a way to argue and it's more of a constructive type. We're going to get some agreement. You're working on a solution. You're trying to get to the end emotions. of the topic or the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as men, men just want to get to the end and be done with it. Just saying. But women, there's a we way want to go don't... and figure out where the root is and how we can, you know, well, you heal guys, from our past. And... and you guys have the feelings out there. You got all those feel like Dave Ramsey says. When your wife has the feelings, you probably shouldn't. Um, no, he says you should listen to him. You probably. Well, I was going to finish. <laughs> You, you probably shouldn't ignore her feelings because when she has her uh -huh. feelings, that means she's feeling like that choice that you're about to make is probably a bad idea. So, yeah, women do have some intuition that is helpful and men have some wisdom and, and sometimes some intuition that is sometimes I'm naive and you see stuff that I don't see. Right. And sometimes you're not seeing something that I see. So right. conflict is important to keep us on track and everything. Right. One thing that I learned this week in our, we had a big week of conflict. We had some big situations. It was a, it was a real whirlwind of a week yeah. for us for conflict. Yeah, yeah. We had some doozies. Yeah. And, yeah. and it just has to do with, it's the beginning of the year and are we meeting those goals and where are we at? Did we redo the budget? And anytime you bring that stuff up, 
then yep. you uh you know lift up some of the the stuff you've kind of ignored all year well in even even with that if if you've struggled with certain parts of your goals mm -hmm. over the 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 main part of time you've been married it starts to become frustrating for a spouse whether it's the wife or the husband mm -hmm. you know you you need to step up and take ownership and say yeah you know i was careless here and we need to work on that and this is the direction we need to go and admit that your spouse is right in the direction that they want to go because in the end that direction they want to go is the true and straight and direct um correct direction that you need to have mm -hmm. as the end goal for let's just say finances mm -hmm. you know you you've been like spending 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 here and now you don't have any money for your bills and there's a hole in your bucket and you're trying to figure out where it's going mm -hmm. well it's the spending so you need to take and remove that from the situation and put it over here and, and without conflict then it would just keep going on you know so there are times you never get anywhere when you need conflict to 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 address situations yeah you know so you don't want to avoid conflict you want we never avoid conflict <laughs> we're pros at conflict <laughs> but the one thing i learned this but it's not a bad thing i yeah. mean don't don't think that you know it's a bad thing um i think for her and i to talk through our conflict it helps us to become a better couple Mm -hmm. So, and you need to always know that there's going to be that conflict there, but that does not give you the right to belittle your spouse. Correct. Correct. And then one thing I learned this week in our conflict is we were speaking different languages. We were also coming from different places where different things were important. Right. And when I finally, it was a couple days and I was like, I can't get him to understand this. And I came up with, and it was, it was like the breakthrough, that I came up with like a word picture. Mm -hmm. And when I brought the word picture to him and said, this is what, how important this is to me, and this is what I feel like mm -hmm. is happening, and here's the word picture. So I created a word picture that he was easily, like he could picture, like that's not, fun that's not good and mm -hmm. and it clicked and that's where we resolved i you know we don't always do conflict well and sometimes right at the beginning of our conflict there might be some things that are unhealthy and if we can stop those and get past that and then get to the resolution of trying to understand each other and trying to communicate better so i was trying to when I finally figured out how it was creating a word picture that you could understand right. from your perspective. So basically, in a nutshell, she busted out the crayons in the coloring book and demonstrated <laughs> to me what I needed to do. Just kidding. No. That's not, that's not it was, what she did. It was, I was just yeah. kidding. Yeah, it was more about just um, that. And then but also, it's easier for me to it's easier for me to understand if she gives me a word picture and gives me an explanation of why she's thinking this direction would be best. And when she gives me a word picture, I can understand it and grasp it. Different people learn different ways. Mm -hmm. And I learn with word pictures a little bit better. Or I can connect if you were to tell me, okay, well, what I feel is like this. Right. And then you give me a word picture. I'm like, oh, Correct. you know. And especially if I can use manly terms. Building yeah. and stuff like manly that. Manly terms are always good. <laughs> so, yeah. So we, we got through it. We're still married. We're, we're still alive. Here. We're still doing the channel. We're still doing videos. Well, and I think it's funny that <laughs> often God does this for us. If we are learning something and trying to teach it and trying mm -hmm. to, even when we were teaching it to um, young marrieds and stuff like that, sure. God will inevitably let us live through it that week right? so that we have a clear example and a clear understanding of what we need to um, teach. Right. And so <laughs> we were about to do the one on conflict, and we were in so much conflict, we couldn't read the chapter together. Yeah, and what, we... <laughs> a great, what a great learning curve. 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> So, Here we are yeah. trying to go over a conflict chapter, and mm -hmm. we're right in the middle of some pretty intense conflict for all of last week, so uh, yeah. it was perfect timing. Perfect timing. We learned some good lessons about learning to communicate better, Yeah. being careful, forgiveness. Forgiveness is a big one. What do they say? Um, a, a great marriage or a mar long-lasting marriage is only made out of two great forgivers, mm -hmm. and that's... If you see uh, people married for a long time, it's not that they just have these perfect little lives and they're just living and they're like, la la la, it was so easy, we made it 50 years. Mm -hmm. No, it's that they've had to forgive over and over. They've had to learn to communicate even though that they speak different languages or come from two different genders and do things totally different and come from a different childhood, have different views. Yeah. Yeah, so um, if you're going to be married for a long time, then it is so important to forgive, to keep working on it, to um, keep doing what you need to do to get to that next level. And don't be afraid to have some conflict in there. No, it's healthy. As, and like I said, and I think mm -hmm. I've said it twice already, just don't belittle your spouse. Yeah. You can have conflict in your marriage and not belittle your spouse. You can rise above that temptation of wanting to throw those daggers and just, mm -hmm. you know, yep. say mean things, but you don't have to say anything mean. And you can accomplish um, the end goal by being yep. respectful and still have conflict. Well, and he had some really great things to say, you know, not only about that, about um, having some passwords that say, hey, if I say this, then we got to reroute this conversation in a different direction. We're going in a bad way. Or, um, hey, you really hurt my feelings there. And being honest, finding ways mm -hmm. to say that. Um, let's be careful. Let's not step on each other's toes. Um, that sentence hurts me. That makes me feel like this. Um, but then also he talked about um, the very thing you love most about your spouse, you know, when you first uh, got together. The very thing, the qualities that you loved about your spouse are the things that become the most irritating. And that is so true. Mm -hmm. Because what we wanted was, um, or what, what I was attracted to you was that I was very structured and you were kind of fun and a free spirit and we would go out and I just had the best time with you. <laughs> we would just be like, woohoo, we're gonna go cruise Beach Boulevard and go to the beach and maybe we should get some wood on the side and we'll do a bonfire. And, yeah. um, and we would just run through the drive-through and grab some food and, and then- Everything was just random. Those are qualities that I thought were just amazing because I, it was new to me. And yeah. <laughs> it's not so good for her now because yeah. it annoys her, but that's okay. Well, and what qualities did you fall in love with about me that maybe now are a little bit more irritating? Well, she used to be very um, quiet and meek and very just compassionate towards others. Very um, structured. Very structured. <laughs> um, Were you attracted to the structure? I don't think so much the structure. I think just how genuine, mm -hmm. how genuine you were when we met in so high school. So that irritates you now? Mm. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that doesn't irritate me, but things have changed. You're more of an extrovert than an introvert. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are things that have changed that it's not that it irritates me. It's just that things have changed. Are different. Yeah. So that didn't prove what I was talking about, but... But hey, I'm random, so I'm all over the place anyway, so who cares, right? <laughs> so basically, let me say that again. Um, the very thing you love most about your spouse is often the thing you are most irritated about. Um, he had a list of things um, that you can do to help improve your marriage there. Number one was make a list of those things you most appreciate about your spouse, all the qualities. And then, number two, when you get angry, ask yourself, um, what of, you know, identify the trigger event, and then say, which of the qualities um, is this coming from? You know, which of the things? So, 
Let's do an example. You are a free spirit and you are fun loving and you are a hoot to be around and you keep a me hoot. on my toes. A hoot. But the reason that can be my most irritating is because you're not structured in the finances where you just start going, woo, let's do this, you know? And so I need to go back and say, this irritates me, but, but it comes from the quality I most adore in him. So I have to go back and what positive quality is this irritation related to? I need to go back and say, yeah, that's irritating me right now, but that's a quality I love about him. So I guess for me, for you, it would be structured mm -hmm. because I liked how you were structured. You had a plan when mm -hmm. we were first dating in high school and now so much structure is overwhelming. <laughs> So you have to go back and when you're irritated with that, say, that's what I love about her. Yeah. Because when we need structure, you're there. Yes. And when we need... And you make it happen. And when we need fun, he's there. <laughs> so, you know, they, the chapter did have some really good, fun, fun stuff. So I thought we would end on um, this right here. Uh, it is the difference between men and women. Talk about fun. Yeah. At the ATM. Yeah. So this is a man using an ATM. And then I'll step. follow it up step by step. Yeah, go step one. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting there. I need some structure. Okay. So I'm going to go over step by step for men. And then I'll switch it to step by step for women and what happens when a woman goes to an ATM. So when a man pulls up to the ATM, number one, pulls up to the ATM, inserts his card, enters his pen, takes the cash and receipt, and drives away. Five. Five steps. Okay, get ready, because you're going to be counting a while. <laughs> this is when a woman pulls up to an ATM. They pull up to the ATM. They check the makeup in the rearview mirror. Shuts off the engine. Why are they shutting off the engine? I have no idea. I would have to ask you. I don't know. <laughs> Put, it's not me. <laughs> put keys in handbag. Why? I don't know. Get out of car because you're too far from the machine. Hunt for card in handbag. Insert card. Hunt in handbag for scrap piece of paper with the pin number written on it. Enter the pin number. Study instructions for at least two minutes. Hit cancel. Enter the correct pin number. Check balance. Accidentally hit cancel. <laughs> Locate card again. Insert card. Hunt for pin again. Enter pin. Enter correct pin. Make cash withdrawal. I don't know about this. Get in car. Check makeup. We're at 21. We're not even done yet. <laughs> Check makeup. Look for keys. Start car. Check makeup. Start pulling away. Stop. Back up to machine. Get out of car. Take receipt. Get back in car. Put receipt in wallet. Clear air or clear area in handbag for wallet. Check makeup. Put car in reverse. Put car in drive. Drive away. After three miles, release the handbrake. That was like 30, almost 40 things. Okay. Oh my god. I must say. Bill that and Pam Farrell. I think Bill wrote that. Not true. Mm, I think it's partially true. I think Krista probably skips maybe... <laughs> she's probably about 15 of those steps, not 30. But I'm also worried about the person behind me, so I'm like, I gotta go in, I gotta do this fast. Yeah, your anxiety builds because there's a bunch of line, <laughs> line of people behind you waiting. Yeah, and number machine. two, I don't do any of those steps because I don't use an ATM. That's true. Because that's stressful. That's, that's true. I go in through the drive through and talk to a real person. Yeah, you're all about the interaction. That's true. Yes. I, I need them to understand me that I need some money. <laughs> but I do check my hair and makeup often. Yep. You don't know what the wind has done. In fact, it, it's always a big mess. <laughs> anyway 
Did we get anywhere with that? I think so. Tell us in the comments if any of that was helpful. We would love to hear from <laughs> all of you, including the subscribers. Please. Um, mm -hmm. What do you guys do with that? You know, are you guys any of those? Yeah. Or none of those? Or how do you or what? manage conflict? <clears throat> yeah. You guys might even be better at this than we are. Yeah. Maybe you guys can give us some tips. I think the point is keep trying, forgive. Mm -hmm. Keep trying. Forgive. Yep. Two forgivers. Two forgivers. <laughs> so that's all we have for, for today. Yep. Our Friday book um, video. And mm -hmm. until next time, this is Jay and Krista helping you say I do forever. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and like the video. See it you guys. It really helps us. Love you guys.